hard to present everything. So still, I would like to steal some. Do we have a pointer? No, no, we don't. We don't. Okay. Uh, so uh, I will try to steal some minutes from my presentation to. Uh, to introduce you the technical committee of the European Structural Integrity Society, uh, integrity of biomedical and biological materials. This, is, uh, this committee is in charge of today's mini symposium. And I would like to make a very short introduction about the activities of this committee. So generally, the logic behind this committee is a straightforward one. Uh, the European Structural Integrity Society was dealing with traditional materials like concrete, steels, alloys, ceramics, composites, and so on for many, many years. And now, the stage of the development of uh, structural integrity and mechanics of materials is the need to bring together representatives of the medical side as well as engineers to start speaking common language. So, and there are more and more new materials, new processes like 3D printing have been introduced to produce personalized devices, implants, and so on for different applications. This is regarding the traditional materials used under physiological conditions. On the other hand, there is a development of the mechanics of materials like bones, soft tissues, muscle, tendons, and so on, which are also becoming more and more important. These materials, they are totally different from traditional structural materials. So this is the underpinning idea behind this technical committee, which was organized uh, recently. And some of the topics, they are, I don't have time, I'm taking it from my presentation. So they are generally shown here. So we will be dealing with all the problems starting from characterization to the performance damage and fracture of both biological as well as biomedical materials. And specific problems like mechanics of injury and trauma. And obviously looking from experimental characterization, experimental analysis, microstructural characterization all the way to the numerical and theoretical analysis of this. So to give you an idea about the uh, activities of this technical committee, in uh, July of the next year in London, we will organize the first conference, international conference on STANS, uh, with the title STANS, Materials, Mechanics, and Manufacturing. And generally, uh, so just you are welcome. Uh, oh, yeah, sorry. So just like that. Yeah, the, the break was really too short for everything. And I have here some flyers for this, uh, for this conference, if you would like to just to have them. So then the second activity is the, uh, at the moment we are preparing a special issue of engineering uh, fracture mechanics. So just myself and my colleague from Zaragoza. Uh, with the title Damage and Fracture of Biological and Biomedical Materials. So, to finish this introductory part, generally everybody is welcome to take part in the technical committee meeting of this technical committee of the European Structural Society, which will be organized within the framework of this conference. It will be tomorrow in room three, so this room. So, so just, and it's starting at 2.30, so just, it is in the program, and also everybody are welcome, because we are still so just a very young committee, and we are expanding its activities. Good, so the questions will be at the end, but we will have so just at least one break, maybe even two, so we have a possibility to discuss this. Unfortunately, we have so just, uh, uh, just one of our colleagues who is supposed to be like an electron, in two sessions nearly simultaneously, so that's why it will be an additional constraint yeah, of this. Uh, but, uh, we must do this, but otherwise, uh, so just we, we will have the chance to discuss this. Well, let me very quickly then to shift to my presentation, and this is about the uh, 
stands. So it's just I've already said that we are going to, to have the conference about this. Clearly, we are doing something in, uh, in my group as well. So this is a result of collaboration of specialists in mechanics of advanced materials in my group at Lavoro University, together with doctors at University Hospital Arc in, in Germany. So very quickly, what is the major problem? So, so just with the age or with the poor nutrition or simply because of the poor genes, there is a possibility of atherosclerosis. So this is a nice artery, but if something is going wrong, there is a possibility of creation of a, this type of the structure, which is preventing the flow of the blood through the artery. And the way how to do this, this, generally, it is what is called PCI. So people are putting a stent inside, and this is being then expanded, leaving the stent inside the body, and then the catheter is being removed. And by this way, we have the increase in the initial, so it's not full return to the initial diameter, but significant improvement as a result of this, so removing the cross-sectional part occupied by a plaque. So, uh, and, uh, people, how they do this, so in many cases they have a pre-dilation, an opening up in order so just to free some uh, part of that, and they can also suggest to uh, easy up the process of uh, uh, employment of the balloon. Then they can uh, have a post dilation if it is not fully expanded. So generally, the logic what we are doing here is the part of a large uh, project which is still running. But we would like to try to look at the behavior and possibility to use the numerical methods to introduce this. So very quickly so just uh, what it is with the arteries. So we do have uh, principally three layers, intima media and adventia. adventitia. So generally, intima is a relatively small layer, which is very hard to model, and it is played not in that important part, as you can imagine, due to its small thickness. But these parts and the direction here, they are shown, so just uh, these hairy parts, these are the fibers and their orientation, which are making this very complex structure of the artery. So, uh, uh, so by the way, so just uh, Gerhard Paul Sutton, he's also the member of our technical committee. He was the person who developed many of these fibrous models of the soft tissues, which are being used in this approach. This is the, uh, for the plaque, uh, we use the first order of the hyperelastic model. With some modification, we also incorporate Mullins effect, but so just the time is very short for me to go too much into the details. Then I mentioned uh, Gerhardt suggests uh, suggest, uh, the famous false Akkergasser open model, which is now incorporated also into the Abacus software, and it is the it's special variant which uh, uh, so for compressible part of it. It's it having this type of the potential, and these parameters mentioned. Very, I don't understand that it's very hard to get everything, but so just you should simply trust that, uh, that the model is fine and we are using it in an in, in appropriate way. And the important part what we were introducing following the ideas of Ferrari and NASAR was to introduce the damage in order to incorporate the effect of the softening of the artery when it is exposed to a significant amount of stretching. So then, as mentioned, we are moving also two, uh, two layers of the arteries separately with the respective parameters. And this is uh, the parameters which we have obtained by, uh, for a plug. So, so just trying to match the experimental data with the simulation. And you can see that, so as a result, we have a pretty suitable model. And then for the anisotropic layers, we have different, uh, 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 we, uh, uh, we have 
also perform this type of the uh, matching of the models with experimental data. And we have 10 parameters for two major directions, longitudinal and circumferential. It is for a media layer. The same was done for adventitia layer. And so now, before we will go to the simulations to show you that clearly the problems inside us are significantly more complicated than any pipes which were shown today in the, uh, in the keynote lecture. This is the result of the analysis of the patient. You can see, see, you can see here, so this is the artery. And this is so just uh, effectively the catheter which you are going to, uh, to put into it. You see that this is the cross section and it changes along the length of the artery. So clearly, just each artery in each person, they will have its own topology and shape. So we should start somewhere. So that's why we still would like to compare the performance of different stands. And we are working with the major stands manufacturers regarding this. So just uh, under more uh, so just uh, general, more trivial conditions, but allowing us comparability over the different types of the stands. So this is how we are doing. So that's why our artery here is more like a pipe, but with all the complexity of its behavior at different stages. And we are modern artery and the plaque. So just with all this, we are also modern the uh, balloon, and we are not modeling it. So just already exposed, uh, so just prepared to the exposure, but in the initial state, and we are modern the polymer stand. So, so just only have two minutes to go. So that's why I'm so just like uh, here up. So just we will have so just like some break, and I will if there is an interest, I can come, come back. So just to, to these problems at the end. But as always, so just everybody would like to uh, to see. Okay. So. These are the results of our finite elements simulations. So you see the typical uh, dome volume effect, and there is pre dilation and dilation process as a result, and then so just you see what is going on. And here are so just very quickly the results of comparisons. When we were looking at, at the effects of the uh, pre dilation. Uh, without this, by the way, so, so just, uh, it's not a joke, but so it's for you to understand how precise is the art of the even 21st century medicine is when we're speaking to the doctors, because quite a few stents are failing inside the body due to the, even the process of the engagement. When we are speaking to the doctors and they say, what do you do if something happens during the engagement? He said, nothing. So we leave it inside and we put the second one. <laughs> so that's why so just, this is the way how it has been. And so just another two points for you to understand, 15% of the stents are failing. And so just recently, Abbott so removed from the market their only one uh, their biodegradable uh, polyethylene-based stents. Exactly for the obvious reasons, as you can as you can imagine. So from that point of view, when we've done the analysis generally, the safety factor of uh, of quite a few design stands is less than one. So for engineers, is a very interesting point of view. But so just it's simply here to so just to, to spice a little bit what we are shown here. So you see the processes, and you see that the extent of the relation is different type of the up different types of the motion. It's through the so then affects the post dilation behavior. You see here, for instance, uh, when we are doing only setting without dilation, so that's why we are opening less, because the system is less soft. And here is the part of the damage uh, development so just for different types in terms of this uh, dissipation energy. So, uh, so this is the effect of the pressures that we are using here, and much more clearly, so just the high level. By the way, the level of the pressure that they are putting there inside you, so just it's quite a high one. If you, if you look, these are the real numbers. This is not an example. This is what what is being used in the medical applications. Yeah, and this is so just yep. Yeah, sorry, so just and I I will be finished. So this is uh, this is the effect. What type of the uh, so just uh, 
formulation for the of materials behavior for the uh, uh, balloon you are taking, such as this is a compliant and non-compliant balloon. So, so as I said, it's, it's quite a lot. So just to go as fast steps, but we are already so one of the leaders in this area of these quite complex problems of the interaction of the body. I don't want to criticize the others, but many people are using significantly more simple models, such as either balloon without uh, an artery or the artery, very simple properties as usually, such as the elastic line here, considered as <laughs> in many cases, is a reasonably good approximation. So I'm finished, and now we have suggested a without very short, uh, very brief at all. We are going to the second lecture. So thank you very much for your attention.